Let's get right into it. Number one, the brain's own horror movie. Imagine you're at a dinner party surrounded by people, but for some reason you feel like the only one in the room. No, you didn't wander into a paranormal reality TV show. You're just experiencing loneliness, your brain. Well, it's basically freaking out. The part of your brain that processes physical pain, yes, that's right, fires up when you're lonely, like it's dealing with a stubbed toe. Research shows that loneliness activates the same regions of the brain as when you're actually in physical pain. So while you're sitting there feeling isolated and misunderstood, your brain is overreacting like it's been punched in the gut. It's almost like your mind has its own horror movie lights flickering, music getting ominous, and everything in your body screaming, you're in danger, when in reality, you just don't have anyone to talk to about the weather. What does this actually do? Well, prolonged loneliness is like being in a constant state of low-key anxiety, only your brain's not subtle about it. It's treating you like you're constantly under attack by a swarm of hornets. Oh, and here's the kicker. This constant activation of the pain centers makes it harder for your brain to manage stress so it could leave you vulnerable to more serious health issues. Pretty dramatic, huh? So, yeah, loneliness isn't just feeling sad. It's basically your brain throwing itself a pity party and dragging your body along with it. Number two, the social marathon. You didn't sign up for, let's break it down. Humans are social creatures. We need others to survive both emotionally and, you know, literally because who else is going to help us when we accidentally set the kitchen on fire? But when you're lonely, it's like your body's running a marathon with an old pair of shoes and no water. You may not even notice it at first, but this marathon starts taking its toll on you. Loneliness is the unsung contributor to chronic stress, which is like the gremlin in the attic of your brain gradually eating away at your well-being. There's actually a study that shows that loneliness can trigger a stress response in your body that leaves your cortisol levels high for too long. You know cortisol, right? The hormone that's supposed to kick in when you're being chased by a bear or your boss when you're late with a deadline. Except now your brain has decided that every day is a bear chase, leaving you in a constant state of fight or flight, only without the actual fighting or fleeing. Sounds exhausting, doesn't it? And guess what? Your immune system isn't exactly jumping for joy either. Chronic loneliness has been shown to lower the number of immune cells in your body, which means you're more susceptible to illnesses. So it's kind of like having your very own personal stress factory inside you only. It's running on an endless loop of making you feel worse and worse while you're still just sitting at home waiting for a friend to call. No wonder we're all so tired. Number 3. Your brain starts faking friendships. Here's something a little mind-bending for you. When you're lonely, your brain may start to hallucinate the presence of people around you. No, I'm not saying you'll see actual ghosts though, that would make for an interesting plot twist. What's happening here is that your brain being the overachiever it is, desperately tries to fill the social void. It's like you have a vacant seat at your mental table and your brain decides to stuff it with whatever it can find from daydreams about old friends to entire conversations in your head. You know how sometimes you're walking through an empty hallway and you swear you hear someone whisper your name? That's your brain just trying to reassure itself that it's not actually alone. It's like your mind goes on Craigslist looking for temporary friends to rent. This doesn't just happen in spooky situations either. Loneliness can make you more prone to perceiving social signals that aren't really there. You might misinterpret a glance from a stranger as a friendly nod or feel like a group of people is talking about you when in reality they're not. It's like your brain is throwing a party for people who aren't even invited. So in summary, when you're lonely, your brain's solution is to act like a social magician pulling invisible friendships out of thin air. And the worst part, it doesn't always get the trick right. Number four, your brain's new best friend, dopamine. When loneliness hits, it's like your brain goes into full-on panic mode, searching for anything to fill the void. That's when dopamine, the feel-good chemical, starts playing the role of your best and very clingy friend. Typically, dopamine's there when you do something enjoyable, eating chocolate, scrolling through Instagram, or winning a game of Mario Kart. But when loneliness sets in, dopamine starts knocking on your door, offering you distractions that might not exactly be beneficial. It could be anything from binge-watching an entire season of a reality show to eating an entire pizza by yourself. Dopamine is the friend who convinces you to keep hitting next episode because, well, it's the only interaction you're getting for the night. The downside. Your brain is tricked into thinking that these quick dopamine hits while satisfying for a second are actually filling the void of social connection. They're not. They're like putting a band-aid on a wound that needs stitches. The issue with this is that over time if you keep turning to these distractions, you're training your brain to rely on artificial sources of happiness. 
So instead of building real meaningful connections with people, you're just looping through temporary highs. And guess what? That's not going to win you any friend of the year awards. Basically, loneliness turns your brain into a dopamine junkie. Your brain's looking for connection and it's getting hooked on things that in the long run only make the problem worse. Number five, you might get a little weird. Here's something that might make you rethink your next lonely night. Loneliness can actually alter your behavior. That's right, when you're by yourself for too long, it's not just your thoughts that start getting weird, your actions start getting weird too. Research suggests that prolonged loneliness can push people to make decisions they wouldn't typically make, like impulsively buying things they don't need or taking a personality quiz online and actually taking it seriously. Yep, been there. Think of loneliness like a sneaky little gremlin living in your brain, tugging at your emotions and making you do questionable things. And no, I'm not just talking about getting emotional over a TV show. Studies show that lonely people are more likely to make bad decisions, especially when it comes to their relationships. For example, they might stay in toxic relationships simply because the idea of being alone feels too overwhelming. It's like that one friend who keeps texting their ex even though we all know it's a terrible idea. This all happens because loneliness messes with the reward system in your brain, making you more prone to taking risks that might seem comforting in the moment, but end up leaving you with a bag full of regret. So in a way, loneliness doesn't just make you feel bad, it also turns you into a less rational version of yourself. It's like loneliness is the worst life coach, it convinces you to make questionable decisions, and when it's over, you're stuck with the consequences. Number six, the loneliness hangover. Have you ever woken up feeling physically drained after a night of Netflix binging or eating junk food? Well, loneliness does that to you, but it's worse. It's like a hangover without the fun night before. This is because loneliness doesn't just mess with your mind, it messes with your body too. Research shows that loneliness can cause physical symptoms like poor sleep muscle aches and even headaches. It's as if your body is rebelling against you for not providing it with adequate social interaction. What's happening here? When you're lonely, your brain releases cortisol, the stress hormone. And much like how too much caffeine makes your hands shake, too much cortisol messes with your body's ability to rest and recharge. Sleep gets disrupted, you feel groggy, and you're left with a loneliness hangover that's about as fun as getting hit with a pillow stuffed with bricks. But the kicker here. This isn't just a one-off experience. Over time, chronic loneliness can lead to more severe issues like weakened immune function and increased risk of heart disease. So if you thought you could simply sleep off loneliness, think again. It's more of a full body experience. It's like your brain decides to throw a tantrum and your body ends up stuck cleaning up the mess. Number seven, you're becoming a social detective. Ever noticed how when you're lonely, you start obsessing over the most random interactions? Maybe you saw someone glance in your direction at the coffee shop, or you're convinced that a like on your post means they're plotting to kidnap you don't lie, we've all been there. Well, loneliness turns you into a social detective hunting for meaning in every little interaction, even if there's none to be found. This happens because loneliness makes your brain hyper aware of potential social cues trying to fill the void of connection. The problem is, it's often reading too far into things misinterpreting every raised eyebrow and half smile as a sign of something deeper. Your brain becomes a social overthinker, endlessly scanning for social validation or the tiniest scrap of attention. It's like your mind is playing detective even though you're just trying to figure out whether to text that one friend or not. Spoiler, they're probably not thinking about you as much as you think they are. In essence, loneliness takes your already fragile social skills and makes them even more bizarre. Instead of reading people like an open book, you're suddenly interpreting every page as an overcomplicated conspiracy theory. And no, the coffee shop barista doesn't secretly hate you, they're just trying to make your latte not start a silent war. Number 8. The Evolutionary Trap So why does your brain do all this when you're lonely? Well, turns out it's not just being melodramatic, there's an evolutionary reason behind it. Your brain's way of getting you back into the social fold. Loneliness is a signal, like a little alarm going off in your head saying, hey, time to find your tribe. Back in the day, being isolated from your group could literally be a death sentence. Humans are social animals. Without the safety of a group, you're a prime target for predators, illness, and existential dread. Your brain is still living in that survival mode, trying to keep you from becoming a lone wolf wandering into oblivion. So it throws all these painful, uncomfortable emotions and physical signals at you, hoping that you'll feel bad enough to reconnect with others. It's basically your brain's way of saying, hey, we're supposed to be hanging out with other people, go talk to someone. The only problem is that we've evolved into social creatures who don't need to fear saber-toothed tigers anymore. But our brain's still sending out distress signals like it's 50,000 years ago. 
So what happens when loneliness hits is that your brain's outdated programming takes over, causing unnecessary stress and weird behaviors all in the name of survival. It's like your brain has a broken record button stuck on find a tribe even though you're probably just trying to survive a Zoom call with coworkers. Number nine, loneliness and your creativity. Here's something you might not expect. Loneliness might actually help fuel your creativity. I mean, sure, being alone with your thoughts sounds like a nightmare, but it turns out that isolation has been linked to higher levels of creative thinking. The theory is that when you're alone, your brain has more freedom to wander without the constant distraction of other people. It's like your brain is a Pinterest board, gone wild, no boundaries, no judgment, just endless possibilities. When you're lonely, you're often forced to look inward and confront your own ideas, and that can spark a unique kind of creativity. It's why some of the world's greatest inventions and art were created during periods of isolation. Think of Beethoven composing symphonies in a small quiet room, or Isaac Newton coming up with his laws of motion while stuck under an apple tree. Loneliness, while annoying, can open the door to new perspectives that wouldn't have existed if you were constantly surrounded by people and noise. But here's the catch, while it can lead to creativity, it's not a guarantee. It's like trying to make a cake with a recipe that only works, sometimes it could be brilliant or it could be a hot mess. So, while loneliness may provide the right environment for some creative breakthroughs, it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes the only thing you create is an overwhelming sense of existential dread. And let's be honest, how often do you actually feel like Picasso when you're home alone in your pajamas binge-watching cat videos? Number 10. Loneliness versus Solitude. The fine line. At this point, you're probably wondering if being alone is always bad for you. Well, not exactly. There's a fine line between loneliness and solitude. While loneliness is often associated with negative emotions and a sense of disconnection, solitude when chosen voluntarily can actually be incredibly restorative. It's like the difference between eating a cold pizza because you're lonely and eating one because you genuinely enjoy being by yourself and savoring the quiet. The key difference is control. When you're lonely, you're stuck in a feeling of isolation you don't want, but solitude is about seeking peace away from the world's chaos. Studies show that people who embrace solitude often have a better sense of mental clarity, are more self-reflective, and even experience less stress. Think of it as recharging your social battery. But here's the thing, loneliness tends to happen when you're stuck with yourself feeling isolated in ways you don't want to be. Solitude, on the other hand, is when you choose to hang out with yourself because you're emotionally ready for it. So next time you're sitting alone, ask yourself, am I lonely or am I just enjoying some peace? Your brain will thank you either way, as long as it's not freaking out about a phantom social gathering. Number 11, the vampire effect. If you thought loneliness only affected your brain, think again. Loneliness can be a literal energy vampire. When you're isolated, it saps your physical energy and leaves you feeling drained like your social battery is stuck at 1%. No amount of caffeine will fix it because guess what? Your brain and body are in full-on shutdown mode. It's like running on a treadmill that goes nowhere. Your heart rate's up, but you're not actually getting anywhere. Here's the twist. Loneliness doesn't just mess with your emotional energy. It can lower your motivation too. It's like a meth fog that settles over you. You know what I mean, the kind where it feels like getting out of bed is an Olympic event. There's an explanation for this, of course. When you're lonely, your body and brain are constantly in a low-key state of distress, so it takes more energy to do things that would normally be simple. Even something like making a grocery list feels like climbing Mount Everest. That's because the constant stress caused by loneliness affects how you process emotions and makes even the smallest tasks feel insurmountable. This energy drain doesn't stop with your brain. Your body is also paying the price. Lonely people have been found to suffer from chronic fatigue, lower levels of physical activity, and a general lack of motivation to do things. It's as if loneliness puts everything on slow-mo mode and you're stuck waiting for the world to catch up. Essentially, loneliness is the annoying roommate that eats all your snacks, sucks up all your energy, and leaves you questioning all your life choices. Number 12, loneliness and decision-making. Here's something you probably didn't know. Loneliness makes you worse at making decisions. Yeah, I know you're probably thinking I'm a decisive person, I make decisions all the time, but when you're lonely, that little inner voice that usually helps guide your choices, gone. When you're feeling isolated, your decision-making ability takes a nosedive. You might end up overthinking even the smallest choices, like deciding between ordering Chinese or pizza, because your brain is so busy trying to fill the emotional gaps that it struggles with normal cognitive tasks. Why? Because loneliness messes with your judgment. It messes with your impulse control. It's like your brain goes from, I can make rational decisions to, let's impulsively buy 18 pairs of socks online to feel something. 
so you might end up making snap decisions that you wouldn't otherwise make. From splurging on things you don't need to saying yes to that random night out just because you want to feel connected, loneliness clouds your judgment leaving you to make questionable choices. In the grand scheme of things, it's like you're trading short-term relief for long-term regret. You're the person who says yes to everything just because it's better than sitting alone in silence. So next time you say yes to something you didn't want to do, blame your lonely brain. It's the true culprit behind the impulse buying bad decisions and ultimately those what was I thinking moments. Number 13. You start trusting your brain. Less loneliness can actually make you lose trust in your own brain. Think about it when you're constantly in isolation, your mind can trick you into thinking you're not worthy of connection. It creates these distorted thoughts that convince you that you're unlikable or incapable of forming real relationships. Your brain goes into self-sabotage mode telling you to avoid people because they probably won't like you anyway. This mental spiral deepens as your loneliness grows creating a negative feedback loop. And get this, this doesn't just stop at emotional feelings, it also starts affecting your behavior. You'll become more defensive, closed off, or even hypervigilant about the way people treat you. You start questioning motives and second-guessing every text or word that's said to you. Suddenly your brain isn't a reliable source anymore, it's more like a paranoid conspiracy theorist who doesn't trust anyone including you. It's like your brain turns on you making you question everything you once knew about yourself and your relationships. The worst part, this can lead to further isolation which only makes the loneliness worse, creating an endless loop of distrust and emotional retreat. It's like your brain is playing both the villain and the victim in the same story, and guess what? You're stuck in the middle of it. Number 14. The Catch-22 of Social Media Here's where things get a bit meta-loneliness and social media have a complicated relationship. On the one hand, you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, seeing pictures of people hanging out, having fun, and living their best lives. You know the typical, everyone's doing great except for me moment. On the other hand, you're stuck on your couch feeling like your social life is more like a ghost town. The thing is, social media has a unique way of making loneliness worse. While you're connecting with people online, you're actually feeling more disconnected than ever. The reason for this is simple social media tricks your brain into thinking you're having meaningful social interactions, when in reality, you're just staring at pixels. It's like pretending you're in a crowded room while you're alone in a broom closet. Studies have shown that the more time you spend on social media, the lonelier you actually feel, especially if you're comparing yourself to others. Your brain starts associating connections with screens but not with actual human contact, which leaves you with an overwhelming sense of emptiness. It's like fake friendship on steroids. So while social media has the illusion of bringing people together, it often leaves us more isolated like you're hanging out in an empty virtual room full of strangers who can't actually see you. It's the loneliest place to be when you're pretending to be surrounded by people. That's all for today, I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.